Hi guys, this is Jason Williams Dio. This is the Williams Family Medicine Channel, helping you to live your best life. Today I wanted to talk about your immune system and how you can avoid getting sick. Most of us want to know this. This is quite annoying to get sick, to be ill, to miss work, to feel terrible. I'm talking about acute illness, but I'm also talking about chronic disease such as autoimmune disease and cancer. These conditions seem even more important to prevent. When I talk about autoimmune diseases, I am mentioning things such as type 1 diabetes, Crohn's disease, Hashimoto's disease, Addison's disease, psoriasis, etc. There's a whole list of these health problems that are chronic and have increased in incidence in the past 50 years. These diseases have profound effects on quality of life and can result in many visits to the doctor and hospital. Autoimmune diseases just means basically your body has an immune response against itself. Your body recognizes an organ or tissue and sends the immune system to this tissue and damages it. To understand autoimmunity, I'm just going to briefly go over some basics of the immune system. You have bone marrow, the central part of your bones that produces lymphocytes and lymphocytes can be called either B lymphocytes or T lymphocytes. This references where these lymphocytes mature. These lymphocytes, if they are a B lymphocyte, they mature in the bone marrow. If they are a T lymphocyte, they migrate from the bone marrow to the thymus gland in your neck and mature there. The general distinction between B and T lymphocytes is B lymphocytes seem to be responsible for presenting antibodies to your immune system to regulate or stimulate other immune cells to attack foreign invaders such as viruses or bacteria. On the other hand, T lymphocytes directly destroy foreign invaders or substances recognized by the immune system. They also secrete substances called cytokines, which are chemical signals to stimulate the immune system to regulate immune function. These cytokines help to modulate the immune response to make it not too brisk and just brisk enough to do the job. It also regulates programmed cell death and even cell replication. T lymphocytes can be further broken down into T helper cells and T regulatory cells. T helper cells function very similarly to B cells in a way as they respond to chemical signals such as cytokines and stimulate immune system cells to do their job, which can be other T cells, B cells, and even macrophages. These are white blood cells in your body that engulf bacteria or foreign substances. T regulatory cells are more responsible for modulating how intense the immune response is. They also have an effect on allergy response and protection of the good bacteria that lives in your body. Now that you know a little bit about the immune system, I want you to remember T regulatory cells and their effect on protecting the immune response, making the immune response appropriate for protection of your body, but not so overwhelming that it damages your body. I have a list of things that you can do now that you know a little bit about the immune system to improve your health, improve your immune function, decrease your risk for autoimmune diseases, and even acute illness. All of these items are very important, but I think that sleep would be number one on my list. If you recall, when you get sick, you often feel very tired and feel like you need to sleep. Sometimes you try to push through because you have to work or you have responsibilities, but your body is telling you that you need to sleep. Why is this? Well, there are probably many reasons for it, but one is energy production, one is your body needs to repair itself and sleep is an important time for repair. If you want to be healthy and improve your risks, as in risk for decreasing acute illness and also decreasing your risk for autoimmune disease, then you should try to have good sleep on a regular basis. This means good sleep where you go to bed almost the same time every night, wake up almost the same time every day. By study, sleep has been shown to regulate immune system response and T-cell function. I have another video that talks about sleep. Some of the things I touched on during that video include proper sleep hygiene. As we said, trying to go to bed at the same time of day, but also 
have a comfortable sleeping environment, do not have excessive light or noise, and avoiding screen time prior to going to sleep. Screen time or bright lights tend to inhibit melatonin. Once melatonin is inhibited, it is harder to rest well. Of course, if you're someone that has allergies or are a mouth breather, this can interfere with proper sleep. If you're an adult and you tend to have mouth breathing, try to retrain yourself to breathe through your nose. It is hard. Sometimes you have to tape your mouth shut in order to retrain yourself. Practice this because this can have a big effect on quality of sleep. If you have sleep apnea, get it figured out. Get a sleep study, get treatment. If you happen to be someone that missed sleep the night before, you can employ techniques such as non-sleep deep rest. If you follow a professor from Stanford, his name is Andrew Huberman, he talks about specific things you can do to help yourself rest with only a few minutes during the day. It involves listening to a script and meditating to try to get yourself into a relaxed state. Diet would be also ranked very high in order of items that need to be worked on if you want to have good immune function. It is well known that if you're a diabetic, for example, you have poor immune function. You have difficulty fighting off fungal, viral, and bacterial infections, and you have poor wound healing. When you go to the gas station and you fill your car up with fuel, you use proper fuel, otherwise your car doesn't run. The same applies to your body. God has made us in a way that we can adapt to all kinds of adverse conditions to a point, but there's a point where if we continue to put poor fuel in our tank, we do not function right. When we ingest highly processed foods, our body does not know what to do with them sometimes. So sometimes this just gets stored as energy in fat. This fat isn't really doing us that much good. In fact, it's causing hormonal effects on our body and likely causing harm. Unfortunately, we did not get enough energy from eating that, so now we're more hungry than we were to begin with, and then we eat again, starting a vicious cycle, especially if we eat poor quality food. On the other hand, if you avoid highly processed foods, avoid sugar-containing foods, try to focus on lower carbohydrate intake, you can experience much better health. Now the machinery in your body, in your cells, can use this energy appropriately. This energy is necessary for many internal functions in your body, and one of these is fighting off infections. Other techniques you can use to improve your energy is to fast. Seems counterintuitive, but when you fast, you actually are decreasing your insulin level and your blood sugar level. As a result, your body is not experiencing these ups and downs, and your energy production is actually fairly constant. Regular exercise has a similar effect. Exercise deserves its own discussion and has been well known to improve immune function. They have many studies that will show you decreased cancer risk and decreased risk of autoimmune diseases in those that exercise regularly. Next, living in community has been shown to improve immune function. They have studies that show that your lifespan increases by seven plus years if you are involved in a faith-based community, for example. Studies show that patients that have cancer have a much better prognosis when they live in community, in relationships, and are not alone. Living in community, then, is very important in immune function. Don't undervalue it. Gut microbiome health is also important for immune function. The gut microbiome is basically the collection of bacteria that live inside your intestines. These are very important for immune function. The intestines have a greater density of immune cells than anywhere else in your body. Good gut microbiome health improves T regulatory cell function. To improve gut microbiome health, eating a diet that is not inflammatory helps. There are a couple of things that tend to aggravate tight junctions in your intestines and cause you to have more likelihood of leaky gut, which means that you leak antigens into your circulation possibly stimulating autoimmune disease. Dairy products and wheat products both are common to cause damage to the intestine and has been shown to cause leaky tight junctions in your intestine. Avoiding these products might be helpful for gut microbiome health. Fermented foods such as yogurt, sauerkraut, and kimchi can serve as probiotics. And then probiotic supplements 
can also be very helpful in restoring the balance. Vitamin D is a hot topic. If you search on the internet, you will see that it has been linked to improved immune function. Vitamin D is produced in your body, especially when you have sunlight exposure. Many people don't get enough sunlight exposure and you can also take vitamin D supplementation. Vitamin D improves glucose metabolism, which is important for overall health and immune function as we discussed earlier. Vitamin D also regulates T regulatory cells. Two other systems in your body that are important are the endocannabinoid system and the endorphin system. I have discussed these systems on prior videos as well. The endocannabinoid system has been shown to be very important in immune regulation and immune function. And once again, the endocannabinoid system has been shown to influence the function of T regulatory cells. I'll read off a list of some foods that can function as endocannabinoids in case you want to try these to try to stimulate your immune system. These include truffles, dark chocolate, coffee, oregano, curcumin, cinnamon, chia seeds, hemp, walnuts, sardines, anchovies, and eggs. The endocannabinoid system seems to be stimulated by intake of omega-3 fatty acids, which some of these foods we talked about contain these, but you can take omega-3 fatty acid supplements such as fish oil or krill oil if you want to try to use that to stimulate the endocannabinoid system. You will notice a lot of crossover in some of these tricks that you can use to stimulate your immune system. For the endocannabinoid system, it has been shown to be improved in people that meditate and also that are involved in moderate and high intensity exercise. The endorphin system, once again, also influences T-cell function. And as we spoke about in a prior video about naltrexone, the endorphin system is also stimulated by exercise. Low-dose naltrexone has shown anecdotal evidence of effect on autoimmune disease. Low-dose naltrexone has been shown to increase endorphin function by as much as 300%. I'm very interested in the mechanisms about how these things work. You may not be. The take home message is a lot of these items or tricks stimulate T regulatory cell function. T regulatory cells affect allergies, asthma, and even autoimmune diseases. None of us want these autoimmune diseases and I don't want my patients to have them. So I hope if you're my patient, you can use this video as a guide or supplemental advice. If you are not my patient, you need to see your own doctor to discuss this. If you have watched some of my other videos, you're probably gonna notice a theme. There is no magic here. These are things that we need to do. These are lifestyle type of interventions, but they have a lot of power. If you recount the type of things that I discussed today, not only do these things have power in decreasing disease, they also can make you feel better mentally. I don't see that you have a lot to lose by trying these things. This is Jason Williams, DO. This is the Williams Family Medicine Channel, helping you to live your best life. Signing off.